Hello again, this is Albert van Dijk and in this video uh, I want to talk about the application of remote sensing for air pollution monitoring. Now in the previous uh, video uh, we went over weather forecasting and weather, uh, severe weather warning systems uh, and in the next video we'll talk about climate research. Uh, but um, one thing that uh, you can do with remote sensing is look at pollutants, be they uh, 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 for instance uh, uh, soot or um, other uh, dust or whatever in the atmosphere uh, and, uh, and and get some sense of uh, where it's coming from, where it's going and whether there's trends in those. So to give you an example, here's an example um, image from MODIS of, uh, of part of China and you can see the massive smog uh, going on in, 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 uh, this, in this image. So you see some clouds as well of course but all this brown stuff here is, uh, is uh, by and large smog. And, one thing you can do, of course, with imagery like that is, is looking at where it's coming from. You know, where do they, the sources appear to be? Now, that you can almost already see that a little bit in this image. There seems to be some, some dense smoke being generated here, for instance. But, of course, what you can also do is look at it over time and you can start to track um, um, parcels of air and see you know, where smog is, is going to or where it originated from. And so that's one of the things we do with uh, And this is what it looks like on the ground, uh, pretty bad as you probably have seen uh, on TV or such, or maybe experienced yourself before. Uh, another example of air pollution, this time over India. So in, in this side you see the Himalayas and you, and you see the beautiful clean air, and then you see the uh, pushed up against that, the, uh, the uh, polluted air uh, from India. And uh, again, uh, you know, quite, a, quite an amazing thing, uh, I think anyway, you know, you see this massive change from, from you know, air that's sometimes hard to breathe, I can say from having been there, uh, to, to suddenly this crisp mountain air. And easy to see in this case from the space shuttle. Um, but other than taking photos of it, you of course you want to understand the, uh, the, the sources and the trajectories of air pollution. That's one of the main things. And uh, in this case also, for instance, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the trajectory of aerosols. So we know that a lot of aerosols are generated in India and what you see here uh, is, uh, is aerosols in red um, being sourced from, from uh, uh, areas of, of industrial activity or burning uh, and, and what you see here is a, a profile of that using LIDAR, so satellite down looking LIDAR uh, which looks uh, through the atmosphere and basically scatters back from any pollution and that's why this shows up um, Right. It, of course, it also scatters back from clouds, and that's why under these clouds you don't see much at all. And then uh, over the land surface, you see modus imagery uh, uh, overlaid that measures pretty much the same thing. And so we can start looking at the 3D, three-dimensional um, uh, movement of those aerosols. For instance, some of it will go to the Himalayas uh, and uh, might be deposited there, you know, and, and a suit on the glaciers, for instance, which will uh, speed the, uh, the melting of those glaciers. Dust storms is something we're familiar with in Australia. I, uh, you might uh, recall the, uh, the big dust storm in 2009 uh, that, uh, that uh, put uh, the whole of the East Coast uh, in, a, in a red light, including Sydney here. Uh, and so what we can do using the imagery uh, from those days, uh, in, in this case, geostationary imagery uh, from the empty set uh, uh, satellites. Is we can, again, we can see where did that come from, uh, and where did it go, and uh, where, did, you know, eventually, where did it end up? So as you can see, a lot of it, you know, most of it, in fact, ends up uh, ultimately in the ocean. Uh, but we can, you know, we can start tracking back where it came from, and hopefully, uh, that will help us manage uh, that, that type of pollution a bit better. Then the final example of, of pollution uh, is, uh, is ozone monitoring. Now ozone is a pollutant in its own right, and so in, in cities sometimes you can have ozone pollution. Uh, but at high altitudes uh, in, the, in the atmosphere, it's actually an important part of our, uh, our natural uh, protection systems against UV, as you probably know. So the ozone hole uh, in the southern hemisphere, uh, as you no doubt will know, uh, um, uh, has been caused by the release of uh, hydrofluorocarbons uh, and uh, we can track the decline of that ozone, or the growing I should say, of ozone hole, the decline of the concentration of ozone over time and that's exactly what you see here uh, through a series of years of uh, satellite measurement. And fortunately, as you can also see, it's, it's uh, you know, the decline stops or is halted around 93, 90, 96 thereabouts 
in line with the Montreal Protocol and, and, uh, and sort of concentration starts slowly increasing after that. Um, so there's an example of, uh, and a few examples of the use of remote sensing for uh, pollution monitoring 